distinguished guests, faculty members, students, ladies and gentlemen. I am honored to be here. I have never met Shri Amit but I read a lot of Amit Kamath. I read his dispatches from Washington for the Times of India. I read him in the Illustrated Weekly of India. I am also familiar with moving finger. That was the title of his column for one of the publications. And in fact, sometimes myself and MV Kamat were in the same issue as neighbors, so to speak. He used to write a regular column for the organizer and I used to write for it on and off. So we were friends. I compliment Manipal Academy of Higher Education and the School of Communications for keeping his memory alive by organizing a memorial lecture. I believe that a gathering like this is the most <coughs> appropriate way to perpetuate the memory of a personality like CMV Kamath. I'm sure he would have liked to be remembered in this way. In this way, in the form of words, written and spoken, expressing ideas and ideals. When Dr. Sriraj asked me if I could deliver the MD Kamath Memorial Lecture, I was actually intimidated by the request. But I was delighted to I was intimidated because I was not sure whether I could say something that would merit M.V. Kamath's approval. I was delighted because it would give me an opportunity to be here in Manipal and pay homage to a personality who believed in the power of the written word to change the world and to transform India. I must record my gratitude to Sri Raj Guri and Dr. Padma Rani for giving me this opportunity to spend some time with you. Paying tribute to Kamath is to celebrate the word, the thought. That's a word. <laughs> Paying homage to him is to celebrate the word, thought, and the deeds that they generate. It is to celebrate words and thoughts that ensue from deeds. It is to celebrate the critique of deeds and to celebrate the spirit that challenges words and thoughts that underpin the deeds. All these need to be celebrated. If Kamath's work was not a celebration of words, 
if it were not a celebration of thoughts and deeds, if it is not a celebration of a critique of the deeds, and if it is not a celebration of the critiques of the thoughts that underpin those deeds, I am afraid it's nothing. It is a celebration of words, it is a celebration of deeds, it is a celebration of the deeds that ensue from words, it is a celebration of deeds that ensue from words and deeds. That is celebrating and paying homage to a big This school trains people to communicate. We become communicators. We help different entities communicate through the written word on paper or on the web, through audio and the airwaves, internet, as well as podcasts, and through video on different platforms. We learn the craft of communication, the technique of communicating effectively. That's what we learn here. Depending on where you work or for whom you work, the consumers of our communication vary. If we write a user manual for a digital or an atom product, the consumers of our communication are a certain set of people. If we help a travel company run a blog, we communicate to a different set of people. If we work as a correspondent of a newspaper, we communicate to an entirely different set of people, depending on the language, the region, the domain of the paper, etc. And papers have different sections, politics, economy, cinema, sports, entertainment, and some of them have sections on spirituality also these days. You can add varieties of platforms that are communicating and imagine the different set of people who consume those communications. A medical company, a seed company, an airliner, a hospitality corporate, a software startup, a political party, a politician, a municipal government, a state government, a federal government, a sports club, a charity or a campaign, a country or an intergovernmental body. And the list indeed is long. All these entities communicate and we as communicators, we help them communicate. We help them communicate in order to persuade to convince, to inform, to clarify, to explain, to dispel wrong notions and to publicize. We also help them to out-communicate their adversaries, their rivals and their opponents. We help them manage crisis with communication to soothe frayed nerves. We help them spread goodwill about themselves so that they can raise more funds for their cause, sell more tickets, more goods and services, maybe more hotel rooms, or get elected or get re-elected. We help them to do that. In other words, we are experts. We know the art and craft and technique of communication. Our art, craft and technique are used to make people, the public or the masses to understand what those entities that we list, that I have listed above want them to understand, what these entities want the public to understand. The impact of this effort has evolved over the centuries. All these purposes 
existed in some form or the other throughout the centuries. They were gradually refined. They were selling and buying. There were conflicts. There were efforts to persuade, convince and clarify. There were efforts to dominate as there are today. But what someone could communicate orally to a group of people within their earshot has begun to reach wider and wider audiences with the written word. And with the technique of microphone and loudspeaker, even the spoken word began to reach much wider space. Then, the facility to record and replay. Then the technology to capture not just the audio but the picture. The ability to capture the still picture and then the moving picture has transformed and revolutionized the reach of communication. Technology to capture, record, store, replay, replicate, relay, share, words, sounds and pictures, both still and moving, has transformed the way we can communicate and the impact our communication has on societies. Then, the costs. Once produced, storing it has become cheaper these days. Copying it is almost at no cost. Sharing it too has become dirt cheap. Then the time. We are able to communicate faster, copy much faster. Share almost instantly and are able to retrieve what we stored immediately. Accession has also become instantaneous. All this is possible because of the internet. Digitization. The increase in the processing power of the chip and the phenomenal increase in the storage capacities. I remember the days, probably you were not born then, we flaunted 64K, 64KB. Are you familiar? I used to flaunt, I used to have a small 64KB capacity phone book. Now I have a phone. This is 256 GB. <laughs> we carry small devices that carry terabytes of data. Communication has truly become mass communication. Unprecedentedly mass communication. At every turn of its evolution, the progress appeared revolutionary. I don't know if you remember. We used to have pages. Pages. Yeah. That was revolutionary. You know, somebody would beep. Doctors used to have. Yeah. Somebody used to beep. And then you go to the nearest telephone and call him. Why didn't you beep me? Yeah. That, was, that was revolutionary. Dr. Balal, when uh, I was studying at LAC, people used to carry mobile phones, huge, brick like things. You know who used to carry those? Plumbers used to carry. Because in the Western societies, plumbing is an emergency service because the, the, the snow, the freezing of water and the pipes burst. 
So anybody who is carrying a mobile phone, after some time, also in the lips, they used to hide their mobile phone, lest people would think he's a, mo he's a plumber. <laughs> but now we flaunt, isn't it? So, at every turn of its evolution, the progress appeared revolutionary. Perhaps some even wondered what more could improve at every stage. Even today, we can know it's, it's huge, isn't it? Today, some of us wonder what more can be in store. We have already entered the age of wearables. Some of you must be having Apple Watch and things like that. <laughs> the wearables. <laughs> Having given a broad outline of the transformation of communication over the years, I will now come to the point. It's now time for me to flip the point of communication. I would flip the communication coin. The term mass communication was coined not to mean the communication of masses. Rather, it is coined to define the communication to the masses. Mass communication is not communication of the masses, but it is the communication to the masses. By whom? By experts by corporates, by governments, non-profits, political parties, politicians, charities and other bodies. <coughs> they talked down to the masses. They were the, the, these people, who, the experts, the corporates, the political parties, the politicians, the non-profits, the charities, the campaigns. They were the repositories of what needed to be communicated. A very top-down structure, an elitist structure, but largely misunderstood or misinterpreted as democratic. People think, people thought, still think that, you know, a communication can reach millions and millions of people, therefore it is democratic, isn't it? It is not democratic. The right of the expert, the corporate, the charity, the government, the political party, the campaign to communicate was considered as the flowering of democracy. It is still being considered that way. I have a right to communicate. That is my democratic right. I believe. I have a right to consume the communication. I have a right to communicate. At the same time, I have a right to consume the communication. A communication that is put out by the other entities. That also is my democratic right. Any infringement on either of these rights, that is, my right to communicate or my right to consume the communication, any infringement of this any restriction of this. My ability to communicate is not only a restriction of my democratic right to communicate, but it also amounts to the restriction of the democratic right of the reader, the viewer and the audience to, to consume what I have communicated. Suppose if you stop me from communicating, you are restricting me, one, you are also restricting those potential viewers and listeners and audience. They write also. So when you, when you restrict me, you are restricting two people. Me from expressing, the other from consuming what I express, from hearing what I am expressing. 